Oh, thank you very much. Brianna, we're very happy to have you as our MC. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, Greg, I don't get an offering song, huh? <laughs> anyway, I just want to appreciate Greg and his wife, Paulina. Uh, you know, he's back there on the soundboard or something. He's up here leading the songs. He's organizing everything. Uh, he's really doing a lot. So he and his wife both. So please give him a big hand. Yeah. And good morning, Mrs. Du. And uh, our pastor, our senior pastor, Reverend Du, is in Korea at this time. And uh, along with many other leaders of our movement. Uh, and uh, last night, did, or yesterday, I guess, late afternoon, did anybody watch the events that were going on in Korea? Raise your hand if you were involved. Yeah. Maybe about half. Okay. That's great. Yeah, that was really beautiful to watch. And uh, for those who could not attend, um, Father Moon, he is the, together with Mother Moon, Reverend and Mrs. Sun Young Moon, they are the founders of our movement the Family Federation, and he passed away 10 years ago. And the ceremony, we call it an ascension ceremony, where the person ascends to heaven, uh, the 10th anniversary of that ceremony took place yesterday afternoon. In Korea, it was in the morning, but for us here, it was 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And it was really nice, because they kind of you know, went through the things that he had done in his life, and uh, it was quite touching. And uh, yeah, I think I, I was brought to tears. They, one of the songs that was sung, they had a, this incredible musical, you know, four-part musical, was really well done. And one of the songs, the, when the uh, uh, father was in his older years, right? And then he's passed away, and he comes back and he's singing to, his, to Mrs. Moon, right, his, his wife, uh, don't go to my grave and shed tears for me because I didn't die, uh, I'm still alive. So, so don't go and, and don't shed tears for me. It was really touching, so. So it was a really nice experience yesterday. And uh, I'm really happy to be here with you today. I haven't been up here for quite a while giving a sermon. So I think I've, I've uh, kind of forgotten how to do this. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, I'm gonna click the slide, it works. So I'm sorry, uh, when I'm working on a sermon, I don't focus so much on the beautiful graphics. So my graphics are not so beautiful. But, um, yeah, what is it? Uh, minimalism, is that the term? Yeah, I'm, I'm a, minim a minimalist, okay? All right, so my title is Absolute, Eternal, and Unchanging. Yeah. So this is um, oftentimes... Uh, Father Moon would talk about God as being the absolute being, the eternal being, the unchanging being. And so I just was reflecting a little bit about why do I believe in God? And I thought it, this would be a good thing to talk about for a Sunday. So the reason why it's important to find that which is absolute, eternal, and unchanging is that it will give us a life with meaning, purpose, and love. And through these things, we find joy in life. The real source of our joy is when we find meaning and we find uh, purpose, we, fi we feel hope, and most importantly, when we feel love in our life. That's when we feel joy, okay? All right, so uh, my, wife had, uh, my wife and I had an experience recently where we went to uh, Michigan, the upper peninsula of Michigan, on the shores of Lake Superior, okay? So in America, we have these things called the Great Lakes. They're up north, you know, in the middle of the country. And uh, my sister lives in Michigan, my older sister. And her son uh, was getting married, so they invited us to come to the wedding. So we went there for this wedding. Wow, is it beautiful up there. So they rented this 
beautiful cabin on the, on the shores of Lake Superior. And uh, so we stayed there for a few days. And they had this wedding at this uh, ski lodge, right? So it's summertime, and you could take the lift up to the top of the mountain, you know, during the wedding. And it was really nice. They had a jazz, a live jazz band playing, and it was really, really nice. You know, you couldn't get a better situation for a wedding. And then when they were making the vows to each other, the bride was basically shared about how much she loves her future husband, right? The, her husband-to-be, the bridegroom. So her sharing, her vows were mostly about, you know, how deeply she loves him and how long she had loved him and she's looking forward to loving him, you know, forever, that kind of thing. But he shared something very different, right? And he talked about, you know, how precious she was and he went back in history, you know? So he was saying, I'm so grateful that your ancestors existed and they gave birth to you. And then he went further back. He said, and I'm so grateful that life developed and created you, you know? So he went all the way back to the original, you know, the first amoeba in the, <laughs> you know? And then he went back even further and he talked about how this universe, you know, the universe began with, you know, the, the beginning of energy and, and you know, the uh, uh, transformation of, of the elements, you know, uh, so that life could exist and that it could make you. So I, I was pretty amazed by this person's, like his kind of, his insight and his talking about the value and the preciousness of his wife. But of course, I was waiting for him to go one step further. You know, it's like, did a supernova create your wife? I mean, that's what you're saying, is that it's all about a supernova that took place in the universe? And he stopped there. He didn't go back any further, which would be to go back to where my heart believes is God, the absolute, eternal, unchanging, right? God, right? So actually, I really, really felt sad at that moment. And I realized that in all the proceedings of this wedding, there was never once the mention of God. Not once. No mention, not even a, you know, <laughs> subtle kind of reference of any kind. It was totally absence of God. And it was all about their happiness and, you know, their being together. Should I just stick it out? So anyway, I really felt sad about that. Especially I feel responsible. This is part of my tribe, right? This is part of my family. And I should be able to, you know, help them understand maybe about God. All right. So I wanted to share. So he, he talked about, you know, where we come from. And just to let you know, you know, we're, there are about 108 elements that make up the natural universe. There's like hydrogen and helium and blah, 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 all the way to 108. Each element, each atom uh, has a number of neutrons in it. In the center, there's neutrons and protons. And the number of neutrons gives it its atomic number. Right? So hydrogen is one. That's one. And when the universe began, hydrogen and helium, that's one and two, they could form naturally. When the energy, you know, came out and the energy began interacting and making particles. And those, so most of the universe was hydrogen and some helium. Then how did all the other elements get created? It's through stars. So this is our sun. This is one star. And in the sun, in a star, there's a process that takes place called fusion. And these, you know, atomic, you know, reactions that are going on these hydrogen can be forced together and the helium forced together and they can make larger and heavier elements, all right? So this takes place all the way up to number 26. Does anyone know what number 26 is in the atomic table? $10 if you can get it. <laughs> Don't check your phones. 
Okay, this, this will help. It starts with the letter F. F. Iron. Very good. You wonder, why not I? Why F? <laughs> you know. Anyway, it's iron. Then everything bigger than iron, how does it form? How do all the other elements, 26 all the way up to 108, how do they form? Okay. Uh, this takes place to what's called a supernova, or when two neutron stars collide. Okay. So I just want you to think for a moment, it takes billions of years for these stars to form and these really, really big stars are the ones that collapse and create these huge explosions called the supernova. And all the neutrons released enable these heavier atoms to be created. So anyway, uh, my nephew, I guess, yeah, my nephew, he was talking about this kind of a thing, that this is where we come from. This is the, the, all the atoms in your body, you know? Everything, the carbon and the hydrogen, the nitrogen, everything was created over billions and billions of years in this way. It's, it's quite amazing if you think about it, how God had to be very patient as the kind of the universe is being cooked and prepared so that life can emerge. That's patience, right? Billions and billions of years, God waited patiently for it all to work. Okay. So I want to share just a little bit about my own experience with this trying to find, you know, who is God. And I had a conversation at the wedding. Uh, my sister and I had time, time together. We were talking. And she expressed to me, yeah, you know, the universe, because I was saying to her, the universe has a beginning point. And that was difficult for my sister to accept, that the universe has a beginning point. She said, no, 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 no. It's, you know, how can there be a beginning point? How can space have some limit? No, no, the, it's got to be eternal. It's got to be infinite. Kind of that. She has this gut feeling like it needs to be infinite. So my, what I want to share from my personal experience is that's what should lead us to our faith in God. Okay? Okay? Because nothing in the physical, material world can be infinite. It is not possible for anything in the physical material universe that we live in to be infinite, eternal and unchanging. There is nothing like that. So I'm going to give you a little helpful tool for this. See this? It's a tennis ball. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So you can see how big this is, right? Now, can you imagine this be getting bigger, to be as big as I am? No? I hope so. <laughs> yeah. You can imagine this getting bigger, like a, a bigger ball. I could go out and you know, bring in a big, like this size ball. And then I could bring one that's this big, right? And you can imagine a ball as big as this building, right? That's possible? And you can imagine a ball as big as a planet Earth, right? Okay, so now just keep making it get bigger. As big as our solar system. And bigger and bigger. Now here's the question. Can you imagine it becoming infinitely big? And for this, the answer is no. You cannot imagine this becoming infinitely big. My point is that nothing in the physical universe can be infinite. That includes space is part of the physical universe, space. Space is not infinite. It has a certain limit. It's getting bigger as a, our, our cosmos expands, right? But it's not infinitely big. It will never get that big. How about time? Can time ever become infinite? Time is part of the physical cosmos. It's a part of physical reality as things change. We have this concept of time. Time cannot become infinite. 
So try to think for a moment. What if, what if time, as you know, time is progressing going forward, right? Like one minute went by, now ten, then 10 minutes will go by, and I only have like a few more minutes left in this <laughs> presentation, and then, you know, time goes. So then you might think, okay, well, going back, going back, going back, then you, my sister was thinking, well, time goes back infinitely, right? Absolutely not, <laughs> okay? If time went back infinitely, if an infinite amount of time has already transpired, first of all, you can't imagine that, but if an infinite amount of time has already happened, okay, if, you, if, if time went back infinitely, then everything that could ever possibly happen would have happened. In an infinite amount of time, everything that can possibly happen will have happened. The universe in which I stand like this, and then another whole universe in which I, the, the podium's over here instead. And another universe in which the podium is in here or here, and in which I lifted this finger, that finger. Every possible kind of universe and outcome, everything would have already happened if time actually has been infinite, infinite time. It's ridiculous, no. Time, space, size, sound. Can, you get, can sound become infinitely, infinitely loud? <laughs> it cannot. So that which is infinite and absolute and unchanging does not belong to this substantial cosmos. They do not exist in the substantial universe. That which is unchanging, absolute, and eternal is of a different kind of dimension, different kind of situation. It's of God. It's of the heart. God's heart, God's love is absolute. God's being is absolute. You can't measure it with time or space or size or sound or loud or soft. You can't measure it. It is an absolute existence. And that's why our universe could, could come to exist, because there is such an absolute existence that brought forth everything. And good for us, lucky for us, that absolute being is the being of heart and of love. And I don't know if this is true or not, but. Part of me feels like this. God's love is absolute. Not because it is automatically absolute, but I believe in my heart that God's love is absolute because God chooses to love absolutely. I experienced that with my wife, okay? Okay. Do I love my wife? Because it's some kind of, you know, I, I, my love grew and I, I have this thing called love and it just automatically loves her. And then that love is absolute. That's not my experience. My experience is every day I choose to love my wife. Every moment I see her, I choose to love her, to care for her, be faithful to her have a heart that is unchanging towards her. Same with my children. It's not an automatic thing. I choose to love my children and keep loving them, no matter what situation they may get involved with or what may happen. So I really believe that if we think about it, like my sister, she had this feeling like it should be eternal, you know, it should be infinite, it should be absolute. And she's right, but she's trying to connect that to the, the, the visible, physical cosmos. And it just doesn't work. And that's why a life based only on material things, based only on my intellectual concepts of love for my wife, it won't work. The happiness we seek comes from the heart the experiences of the heart, that's where we will find our happiness. And it's not of this material world. It's not just only in our you know, feelings that come and go, 
but there is a deeper realm of heart which connects with God's heart. And that is what, that is that which is eternal, it is absolute, and if we, if we decide, it can be unchanging. We can make it unchanging. So that was my reflection uh, based on this wedding, you know, and thinking about uh, how important God is in my life. Now, uh, you may be struggling because, you know, this is a sermon and these are words, absolute, eternal, and changing. Okay, that's, that's God, God's heart. But, you know, I'm still kind of miserable. <laughs> I have a hard life, I'm struggling with this, I have these problems, I have emotional problems, you know. And I want God to be able to actually become a, a real part of my life and make a difference. So that's why um, I like to teach the divine principle. I really love the divine principle. It is the truth that Father and Mother Moon have brought to this world. And what I want to say is that if you study the divine principle, it will really help you a lot. And what we'll learn in the divine principle, and this is my con kind of concluding thought, is that, yes, God is absolute, eternal, and unchanging. He exists. God is there. He and she, okay? Both male and female. But God cannot easily relate to us. It's not an easy relationship with us. There's, what's the term? There's history between us, right? There's been a history between us. Okay? So it's not like I just met, it's like you meet somebody, right? But what if that person in the history had betrayed you and had slaughtered your children and then had done this and this and this and that and all these things? It's not so simple then, is it? When someone has destroyed your life or betrayed you or stolen your love or, or done all these things. So what Divine Principle says to us is we are part of a long history with God. And God is absolute. His love is absolute for you. His love for you is unchanging. His love for you is infinite and eternal. It really is. But through the course of the fallen history of humanity, we've put ourselves in a place where it's not easy for God to speak to us. You know, there's a story in the Bible where um, this man goes to the spiritual world and uh, he's a poor beggar and the master, these two guys go to the spirit world. One goes to heaven, the other one goes to hell, right? You know the story? And then the guy, the rich guy, who's in hell, he says uh, to Abraham in the spirit world, hey, go tell my kids, you know, <laughs> what, not to do what I did. You know, he was a selfish miser, and, you know, he, he didn't care about the poor or anything. So he says, please go tell them, you know, and warn them so they don't end up like me. You know, this is where he says, can I get just one drop, you know, from heaven of water to, to quench my thirst? And the answer is no. So he's kind of desperate. Please tell my kids. Then Abraham said, I've already tried to speak to them through the prophets. They wouldn't listen to them. Why would they listen to me now? So my point is, it's not only about you and God, but there's a history between God and humanity. And for God to be able to speak to us it's not easy. Remember Moses? He went 40 days fasting on the mountain, almost on the verge of death, before God could finally trust him and give him the Ten Commandments. And also, talking about Reverend Moon's life, that, you know, the celebration we had yesterday, kind of seeing the incredible, painful course that he went, being arrested, tortured, beaten, almost to death, again and again. So it's not been easy for God to bring us and speak to humanity, to speak to our hearts. God's made a lot of effort. So that's why I just want to say, please take time to study the divine principle and see 
what God has been trying to say to us what, since the 1950s when that was first published. Yeah. And then as you kind of understand how God's absolute, eternal, unchanging heart has been trying to love humanity, you know, through the course of history, then you'll begin to appreciate more. Ah, this is what, been, what God's been up against. Okay. So that means I need to really show my faith. I need to show God that he can trust me and that if he does speak to me, to my heart, I will cherish it and I will, you know, and I'll become a good person. So uh, please believe in the God who is infinite, eternal, unchanged, and absolute, and that the most important part of God is God's heart, and that God's love for you is absolute, eternal, and unchanging. And that will give us hope for the future, and we can make a better world through that. And then please also study God's word. And uh, I really believe the way will open for you to have personal experience with God in your life. All right, please join me in prayer.